So let's talk about buying versus building a Photoshop computer. Now, as you guys know, I use the iMac now behind me, and this bad boy has 12 gigs of RAM. It's getting the job done for me. But that doesn't mean that there aren't advantages to building your own Photoshop or graphic design machine. In the past, I've built Windows-based graphic design machines, and I also have an old Mac Pro Tower, and I've upgraded that before, and now I'm actually working on a project that I'm referring to as the Franken Mac, where I'm going to be building that out and upgrading it to new hardware, and it's going to run both Windows and Macintosh. So that's going to be really exciting for me, but that will be covered in a later video. What I'm going to talk about right now is an emphasis on building versus buying. So if you want to buy a Photoshop or graphic design machine, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And later, I'm going to talk about the specs you need for whether you're building or you're buying. But the main thing with building it is if you build it, you know that it suits your needs. You know that you're not overpaying for something and you know that you're not having to worry about upgradability later or what its max capacity is. If you buy the components yourself and you decide that you want to start at the low end but have the option to go up to the high end, you can do that when you build versus buy. Sometimes when you buy, not all the components and parts will be readily upgradable without you doing a whole lot of work or throwing away parts entirely. This will save you money in the long run if you build something based on your growth needs when you're doing it. Doing that at the outset is just a really important step in the process because maybe right now you only need 16 gigs of RAM and maybe that's the max the motherboard takes. But if you were building it and you knew that one day you might want to go up to 32 or even 64 gigs of RAM, maybe you want to get into video editing or 3D later, if you built it with a motherboard that had that capacity from the start, you don't have to worry about buying a new motherboard, buying a new socket set, putting a new type of processor in there. It'll be easier to handle all this stuff if you keep it in mind when you start. One of the other advantages is you know how well it's going to perform because you made those decisions yourself. You didn't have to worry about the manufacturer and you don't have to worry about whether or not certain features that you intend to use are gonna be handled by what you purchased. Now, on the other hand, if you're someone who's less technically inclined, there are definitely reasons to buy. And if you don't know what you need and you know you just need to plug in something and work, then you should definitely buy instead of build because you can end up creating a lot of problems by building, uh, especially if you damage components by not installing them correctly, um, by components that are incompatible with one another. So that's another problem. But if you need to handle compatibility issues, I definitely recommend using a website called PC Parts Picker, and that's really gonna help you out if you're a first time builder. Now on the buying side, if you decide to buy Mac, then you know for the most part that that's gonna work and it's gonna fit and handle your needs, especially if you're buying at the higher end. Even at the entry level, Macs do handle Photoshop and graphic design work very well. And I will do a different video on buying different Macintosh computers for different scenarios for graphic design, Photoshop, and photography. But we're going to basically just cover components and specs throughout this video, regardless of whether we're talking about Mac or PC. Even though we know that this is more PC Windows friendly because the newer Macs just don't allow for the upgrades. Apple has cracked down on letting you get inside the case, gut it, and upgrade it. They just want you to buy a new Mac. So I hope now you understand some of the differences between building versus buying. If you have questions about that, definitely feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it very helpful and informative. Um, I hope it wasn't too technically overwhelming for you or boring. If it was, I apologize. You can read more in depth if you would like to at my blog, robertoblake.com slash blog. Just look for the article, Building the Ultimate Photoshop Computer 2015. For those of you who are looking for the budget version of that, it is coming soon. I will probably have it up this week, just pending some final things that I'm putting together on it. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching. And don't forget, create something awesome today.